Hello everyone, Kelsey here from Seed and Sparrow Homestead. Welcome back. We're gonna go outside. Uh, it's been a couple of days since we did all that work out in the garden. The weather's been pretty yucky. The day after that, it rained all day and it was a swampy mess. Um, yesterday it snowed and we got about an inch or so, which didn't last long, it's already melted. Today it's still pretty chilly, so I'm suited up, ready to brave the cold and the insane wind. We're getting 50 mile per hour plus winds out there. One gust came and it took our grill right off of our deck and landed it in the alleyway, so that's fun. I am hoping you'll be able to hear me, but I wanted to show you all the progress we've made in the garden, some of the projects we're gonna be working on here soon, and everything that still needs done before I can start actually planting. So let's just go out and we will see how this goes. All right, so I'm gonna try and film this in between gusts of wind. Sorry, my cat keeps knocking my tripod. But what you see behind me here is the space we were working on, this area and the area up front, which I will take you to and show you. Can you please stop? Um, that's Patty. Uh, so this is, we brought in four scoops of mushroom soil. That's what I plant directly in. Um, and this is a new space here. It's uh, my no dig area. So I had to get my mushroom soil in here so it's ready to plant in. Same with up front, that's all kind of new space, new-ish space. It just needed a, a bit of a refresher. Sorry, here comes the wind. Okay, I had to, wait for the wind to pass. Um, but anyways, I was saying, I've, I plant directly in the mushroom soil. I've been doing that for the last six years and it's worked really well for me. So that's just what I've continued to do. There is a layer of like screened, good quality topsoil on the bottom of them. Um, but underneath that is just cardboard. That's the no dig method. The beds are already prepped. They had already been established. Um, and we added some compost to them last year. So they are good to go. I just needed to get all of my in-ground portions ready. So let me just grab the camera then and I'll show you some of the things we've done and what we still have to work on. Okay, so I kind of established some actual rows slash beds in here. I do still need to pick up some straw that I'm gonna put like in between. I just made a little space here to walk. So I need to do that all in between the little rows and beds that I made. So a lot of the beds here, we transferred soil to from other beds that we had when we redid the garden last fall and we stirred up a whole bunch of weed seeds. So I have to come through here and I need to weed all of these, but that won't take too long. And there's my garlic. It's doing pretty good. And there's the cat. She loves attention. Sorry for the poor lighting, but this here, my keyhole permaculture bed, that's ready to go, it's ready to plant in. Um, we need to get some more mushroom soil for these two boxes that we made. 
And I have been on the lookout for a picnic table on Facebook Marketplace to put right in there so that we can have some meals out here during the warmer months. So that's all that really needs to be done in this area. And then over across the way, that's our chicken coop. That's the greenhouse. We plan on extending this space here in between for the chicken run. And we wanna put up a tall fence, like a six foot fence. So that way we don't have to worry about them flying over um, and into the garden. We don't clip their wings. We just, we let them go. So we're just gonna put in a taller, more permanent fence over there. So that's a project we gotta work on. And then there along the side of the garage there, we're gonna put in a 12 foot bed and some trellising for uh, tomatoes. So we need to construct that bed here soon. So some things that I recently just did, we just went and we got a whole bunch of cattle panels. So we put the last um, archway here in this garden and I have a climbing rose bush that's coming that's gonna go up and over there, which I'm super excited about. I love my rose bushes. I actually got two shrub rose bushes as well for back in that um, keyhole bed. So we got that done and then I just put in this flagstone path about two weeks ago um and over here we got all of our mushroom soil put down i still need to transplant some of my raspberry canes from one of my back beds up here along this side i'm going to bring two of them well two of the, the big plants up here and i ordered two more for on that side i, I have four along this side so i want it to be mirrored over there so that still needs to be done um i've got two more blueberry bushes coming which are gonna go um over there i already have nine over there and i ordered two more and then we just put in these three cattle panels for a nice long um, tunnel which i think i'm going to grow my winter squash on so I'm super excited about this archway. I think it's gonna look really neat. And I needed some way to grow my winter squash where they weren't going to completely overtake the ground because if you've grown them before, you know they just, they spread everywhere um, and consume the entire garden. So I'm excited to have a way to grow them um, that doesn't interfere with other things that are growing. Um, something I have to do, I need to turn under this grass, put down some cardboard and then spread the rest of this mushroom soil down there. This is all going to be for potatoes. I'm gonna do a roof stout, like a modified roof stout. I'm still gonna push my potatoes down into the ground and then I'm going to cover them with straw. So I need to get that done here soon. And then the last thing, let me walk over here. The last thing I need to do over here, I need to put down some more of my ground fabric here and lay more wood chips. I ran out. But then this whole area will be complete and ready for planting. So this is what we've got going on this year. We've expanded about probably 50% more growing space than what we had last year. So I'm super excited about that. I'm gonna have my work cut out for me, but it'll be a lot of fun. So let's get out of the wind and I'm gonna take you inside and show you how my seedlings are doing. All right, we are down in my basement. So it's terrible lighting down here, I apologize. Um, but I'm going to show you how all of my seedlings are doing and I think I'm just going to bring them to the camera because the lighting over there is just absolutely terrible. So this whole tray here is all of my, not all of, some of my herbs. So I've got a ton of different basils. I love basil tea. I just love how fragrant it is. I love the flowers they produce. So I have probably like 10 or 12 different varieties of basil in here. I also have some thyme, marjoram, rosemary, and sage. Um, I think I did some lemon mint, and then everything else is basil. So they're all doing really well. I do have to come in here and thin them out eventually, but they are doing good. This tray here has some of my peppers. These are some of the first things that I planted and they're doing really well. They're starting to get their actual, you know, true leaves now. Um, something I like to do 
when I come down here and water them and check on them. I like to run my fingers over them. It just kind of simulates the wind. You can also run a fan. I have to figure out where mine is, but for now I'm just running my fingers across them just to encourage strong roots and simulate that wind and acclimate them to what they're going to account encounter um, outdoors. So I started some Adjuarski, some banana peppers, nata pinos, cayenne, and jalapeno. I also have some um, paprika peppers and some Tabasco that are just starting to come up. Um, I decided to do them last minute, so they're behind. And then over here, I just recently planted some cabbages and some Brussels sprouts, some of which here have started to come up. Um, some I'm still waiting for them to sprout. So I got that tray. This little guy here is all of my onions. This is how I sew my onions. I put them in a small container and I sew them very thick. Um, and I will let them grow this way until I'm ready to plant them outside. They'll do just fine. I will come in here soon and give them a haircut so they're not flopping all over the place. Um, but I will just like pop out one of these sections and then just carefully separate each of the onions and put them into the ground so that's how i do it it saves a lot of space they can handle it they're really hardy so there are my onions i had one here that this is the second time i've tried getting some to germinate and i think the the pack is just too old so i'm not going to be having any of the cipollini this year um but i have Red Weathersfield, Red of Florence, and Southport White Globe. So that's what I've got going for onions. This little guy here is leeks. Same idea, I just have one container, a bunch of densely sown leeks, and I will just let them go like this and separate them once I am ready to plant outside. This tray of soil blocks, I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see. There is, I don't know if you can, maybe you can see that right above my finger right there. Um, these are celery and they just started to pop up. So this is an entire tray of celery. They take forever to, um, to grow. So I always start them early. Honestly, it's already taken them a little over two weeks to start to germinate and pop through the soils. So it's gonna be a while before they look like much of anything. This whole tray of soil blocks here is just a variety of different lettuce. And I do have some endive in here and radicchio. Yes, I do. So I've got Merlot, Buttercrunch, Lola Rosa, Cimarron, Grand Rapids. This is endive, radicchio. Um, I have no idea how to say that one. <laughs> and slow bolt over here. So um, this is for me and for my parents. I'm growing things for my parents as well. Um, so if you see a lot of something, it's because I'm growing for them too. This tray is all of my tomatoes. I don't know if you can actually, there. Um, now if you watched my garden, I think it was my garden planning video. I'll link it here on the screen and down below for you. Um, I said I was dialing back on my tomato production this year. In years past, I've done like 75 plus tomato plants and I'm just realizing our family doesn't consume a ton of tomato products. Now, this year I'm kind of starting over from scratch in my pantry because all of the tomato products I currently have are pushing two years old. So I am trying to use them all up and I'm going to have to replenish my stock. So I'm still planning on growing about 30 to 40 tomato plants, but I'm dialing it back from what I typically do. Now, all of these are not just for me. I'm growing for myself, my parents, my sister, and um, a local friend. So there's a whole bunch of different varieties going on in here. If you want to know those varieties, you can see it, see what I'm growing in that video as well. So they're all doing really well. This little guy here, it's a Roma. He's like an overachiever. He's already got his first true set of leaves, so he's way above the rest of them. Um, but I always start my tomatoes in smaller cells and then I up pot them. I do that because I like to bury the stem down deeper. I just find you get a much stronger, healthier plant that way. Um, if you didn't know, tomatoes are like a vining plant and wherever their stem touches dirt, 
they will form roots. So it just really strengthens the plant. You get a nice, firm, sturdy stalk. So that's just that's how I do it. You don't have to. Um, so yeah, I will be up potting these probably within the next week or two, and then they will live in that pot until they get planted outside. So most everything else that I have started right now, um, I think I only have two other trays to show you. Yeah. Um, are flowers. I'm actually really behind on my seed starting. At this time of year, I typically have my entire shelf filled and I don't. Now I, I, the last two years have grown, um, a whole bunch to sell and I've decided not to do that this year. It's just something else to do and I don't have time for something else to take on. It's just too stressful, honestly. So, um, that's one of the reasons why it's not as full, but I am behind on starting some of my varieties and I'll take you upstairs and then I'll show you what I've got going on up there. But this little tray here is all snapdragons. I love snapdragons. They're amazing. They smell incredible. Um, and they just add so much beauty to the garden. So I'm doing an entire tray of them this year. I have them pretty thickly <laughs> sewn. So I will, um, I'll go through and I'll, I will thin them out and I will probably pot up some of these into other containers as well. I plan on sharing these with my mom. So I've got, these are an apple blossom snapdragon. This is a tall deluxe mix from Baker Creek. I have an ivory snapdragon and a lavender snapdragon that are from um, Johnny's Select Seeds. And then I have the Black Prince and an orange snapdragon here. So I'm excited to see these guys bloom here in just a few months. And this tray is more flowers. I have yellow asters and apricot asters. My apricot ones have not germinated yet, so I might have to re-sew those. I don't know what's going on there. Um, this little pack here is white gumfrina. I have blue sage salvia. And then I've got two different types of calendula. I'm doing pink surprise calendula and snow princess calendula. Um, I have eight of those going. Last year I had 12 and I did not need that much. I have, I still have so many calendula heads dried upstairs that I'm intending to uh, make some calendula oil to make salves and stuff. I just, something else I haven't gotten around to. Um, and then I have two packs here of cosmic cherry petunias. So I'll put them on the screen. They're super neat. My friend Heather over at Brick House Kitchen and Home She's the one that pointed these out to me. So apparently these are edible and they have like a cherry flavor. And she had a cool idea of making them into like a simple syrup for flavoring drinks and things or baked goods. So I'm excited to see how these look and taste. They're supposed to have like a huge blossom. I wanna say it's like seven inches across. Um, and I don't know if I said those are from Baker Creek. So those will be cool to see how they turn out. And then I've got two um, containers here of sweet peas. I have a Janet Scott and an Azure Blue, I think. So these I'm going to top here soon, so I'll just pinch up here and allow them to branch out. But I wanted to get these going um, because I have two like obelisk, obelisk, however you say that, that I want to build and have out there and these prefer cooler weather. So they're gonna go outside soon. They can tolerate some frost. Um, so that's all I've got going down here. I don't think I have anything else currently. Um, so let's just go upstairs and I will show you what I'm gonna be working on for the rest of the afternoon to hopefully get caught up with all of my seed starting. This is my seed starting station, AKA my dining room table. And this is pretty much how it looks until things have been all sewn and planted out. Um, and then there's like a few weeks where it's actually cleared and we can use it. And then harvest season comes and it's continually filled with produce. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else runs into that issue where every surface in their home just becomes either for plants or for the harvest, but that's how it works here. Um, so I'm just gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna show you everything I think that would be easier um, for you all to see. 
All right, so for the things I'm starting today, I'm gonna do some soil blocking and I am gonna try Charles Dowding's method of multi-sown beets. So he plants like three, three to four beets in each cell and he leaves them that way. He does not thin them out and he puts them right out in the garden that way. So I'm gonna try that and see how that works for at least some of my beets. I'm not gonna put you know, all of my eggs in one basket. I am gonna do some with um, multi-sown in soil blocks and then I'm just going to directly sow some out in my garden. So I'm gonna work on the soil blocks for those today. I have some more herbs that I want to get started today. So I have cilantro, a toothache plant, some fennel. I grow this just for the butterflies. It brings in all of the swallowtails. Same with the dill. I don't typically use that in many recipes but I grow it for the butterflies and some parsley. Pretty sure this whole stack here is flowers or fillers. So I have Bells of Ireland. I'm gonna start these in a paper towel, a wet paper towel, and let them germinate in there. Sometimes they're hard to get to germinate in soil. So I'm gonna do that with a wet paper towel in the fridge. Um, I've got some white larkspur, some white cosmo. This is some black nasturtium. I don't actually know that. It says eight to 12 weeks, but these things get big fast. So I might start a few. I guess I put them in there for a reason. Um, I want to start some mullein. That actually grows wild around here, but I'm just going to start it. Anyways, um, I have these. They're like uh, little pansies, antique viola. I thought that color was really pretty. These I'm obsessed with. They just look so delicate and beautiful and I love the colors. So I've got these mixed lace flowers. I'm going to start um, this is another type of salvia I need to start. Uh, I think I'm going to do a few of these Johnny Jump Ups, another type of viola or pansy. Portulaca, I love this stuff. I think it is just completely majestic. So I was debating doing like an entire bed of this just because I love them so much. But I don't know if I want to devote all the space to it. So we'll just see what happens. And then I've got a few different types of straw flowers. It's not going to focus. There you go. Purple, red. This one is silvery rose, a vintage white, apricot, copper red, and then I've got Crispedia, which is like, you know, I'll put a picture on the screen because that's hard to describe. It's kind of funky looking. Um, some blue status. You got a whole other stack of flowers. I, I said before, I really want to focus on flowers in a huge part of my garden. Number one, I love them. I love cutting them. I love having fresh bouquets in my house throughout the growing season. I was debating actually putting a little stand out in front of our home and selling some fresh cut bouquets. But they bring in all the good pollinators and they add so much beauty. So I'm going all out with flowers this year. So I've got these honeywort, which I thought were super cool. They remind me of something you'd see in like Tinkerbell's garden. <laughs> and my daughter thought they looked cool. So we're gonna do some of those. I've got some more nasturtium. I have a plan to put nasturtium down some of the walkways in my garden. I thought these would be really pretty. I've got another kind of salvia. I thought these were a pretty color. Some salmon queen scabiosa. This is an apricot status. Some tall white alyssum. These are very fragrant and pretty dainty. They're a nice like cover flower. Um, they're, they're a taller version of or variety of alyssum, but I thought I would put these like to fill in spaces in and around other. Um, flowers. I got these Apricotta Cosmos. Rainbow Sherbet Mix Celosia. These are absolutely glorious. I have two different, focus please, thank you, uh, two different types of hollyhocks. These are both, I'm pretty sure, dwarf varieties, but the blooms on these are just absolutely incredible. And then I'll have to get pictures for these. This is, these are some fillers, I think. This is Copper Plume um, Atroplex. And then Euphorbia. Some Sweet Annie. Persian Cress. Some Clarkia. And a different type of Cosmos. These are like a cupcake liner shape. I thought they were really neat. 
So those are the things I want to get started today. I'm going to start working on them now. I will probably be here for the rest of the afternoon getting these done, but that is what I have my afternoon set aside for. I need to get on top of these things. There's a few other things I'll be starting within another week or two. Uh, I have some different kale varieties and spinach here. Those will probably get started. They could get started this week. The kale will take some frost, um, but I wanna get these started within the next week or so. Um, I have all of my pumpkins, my winter squash, and I have some, uh, where is it? My zucchini rompicante here that, that is what I'm growing in place of my summer squash, like your typical zucchini plants. This, um, is a vining plant, so I'm going to grow it up and over one of my trellises, and this, if you leave it to cure on the vine, you can store it as a winter squash. And I don't know about you and if you've grown zucchini before, but I am constantly forgetting about them, forgetting to harvest them, and I end up with this massive zucchini that's pretty in inedible. There's, you know, the seeds get huge. Um, instead of wasting all of like the space for the bushing type variety. Um, and I'm gonna grow this vining type up and over a trellis. So all of these things will probably be getting started in like the next three weeks or so. Um, I typically start them about four to six weeks before my last frost, which is in like the first week of May. So those need to get started here soon. Um, probably within the next week, I will start my cucumbers and um, I have my cucamelons, the Mexican sour gherkins. Um, I have more flowers that I'm gonna start. So a whole bunch of different varieties in here. These are a lot of my zinnias. Zinnias grow pretty quickly um, and I always end up starting them too soon and they're flowering in my basement and then when they go outside, they get stunted. So those will get started in a few weeks. Um, and then I've got carrots I need to start sowing directly outside within the next few weeks. I've got potatoes that need to go in the ground within the next few weeks. Um, what else needs to go out there? Parsnips. Um, yeah, I'm probably missing some things. So this is like kick it into high gear for me to get things done. Um, make sure that the garden is ready to go and um, start out on the right foot for the 2023 garden season. So I'm going to get to work and start getting all of these things sewn into containers. Thank you so much for coming along with me today and allowing me to talk your ear off about my garden. It truly is my biggest passion and if you have made it to the end of this video, then you are my people. Don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button. I encourage you to grow some food this year and grow something lovely. You won't regret it. Have a blessed and wonderful week and I will see you next time. Take care.